What's up, guys? Rory here from COD Connected. I'm hanging out with Rod Ferguson, studio head of Coalition. How are you doing, Rod? I'm doing great. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. So we had a little bit of chance to uh, play some Gears of War right now. Mm -hmm. How excited are you leading up to the launch? We're getting close. Yeah, we're super close, like three weeks away. Um, very excited. Like, just super proud. You know, we went two and a half years ago. We started with nothing, uh, with new team. We'd never made Gears before. We're trying to move on to a new engine, one, Unreal Engine 4, uh, and a new idea for a game. And uh, here we are two and a half years later, and it, I think it's a great... What I've played was pretty exciting. You guys will get more details very soon. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you a couple questions since uh, there was a, a good open beta that happened with the, on the multiplayer side of Gears. Yep. What sort of fan feedback did you guys get from that that the team at the Coalition has like, taken to heart? Uh, I think one of the biggest ones was just the expectation on visuals. You know, we've always, Gears of War has always been a visual showcase, uh, and we've always tried to push the visuals. And the fact is, is that we had a whole bunch of new technology. Like, the backend servers were new, the telemetry was new, matchmaking was new, and so we had to get it out and test it early. So it was really even prior to alpha. Like, we hadn't hit alpha yet, but we called it a beta because people understand what that means. Um, and so what we got was immediately was like, wow, that doesn't look as good as we thought it would. And we're like, yeah, because we're at alpha. And so that was something that over the course of like, uh, we had to sort of keep reminding people and showing, I put out some screenshots like, hey, it's getting better, you know, and that kind of stuff. And so it was just sort of rising to the, meet the expectations of the players it was, it was a big one for us. But, you know, again, it was an instrument to build. We were able to learn from just watching people play. We could track them and see what they're doing. So there's a lot of learnings we got from that. Awesome. Now, I'm going to pull a quote from you, one that was misinterpreted, you know, like crazy when it first came out. Any of my quotes. It probably could be, uh, <laughs> but you'll be familiar with this one. This okay. is when you, um, you said that you actually have to betray fans enough to give them something new right. um, and surprising, but not so much that they disconnect from it. Right. Now, related to that, can you share a couple of like, crazy ideas that were actually like tossed around by the studio, but then ultimately you guys were like, ooh, this is actually too <laughs> out there for the franchise itself? Uh, I mean, part of it was just the exploration of where we go with the story. You know, I talked about is it, like we had this notion of do we do a prologue and do we do uh, alternate history, like an origin story? Re let's do a Spider-Man and we'll, we'll start. A, we'll redefine Marcus, right? And we'll start a whole new. And that just felt disrespectful, you know, to like going like, oh, ignore the previous trilogy that Epic did. Here's our version of the Marcus Phoenix story. Like we didn't want to get into that, and so we went through initial through like a bunch of different ideas about, um, you know, is should it be Marcus's daughter, and, and is this a prologue? Is this a like, where do we take this? And, and, and ultimately, we landed on this feeling like, okay, there's a certain lineage to makes that it feels like there's a masculinity to Gears of War. It feels, and so we felt like having JD be male was important. But then the fact that we wanted a strong female character to be part of the main core, and that's what, like, I felt like we took too long to bring Anya into the fold, if you will, to make her a part of that that the core Delta squad. And so I wanted to do that right from the beginning with Kate, and then and then having Dell. So now you can pick which we, you know, we want to be Kate or Dell as a co-op player, which was exciting. But yeah, that crazy thing for us was really just around. The alternate histories and changing, going to a different planet to fight, you know, and losing the the backdrop of the world and having those connections to the past. Like if you go to a different planet, you lose the ability to talk to Marcus, you lose the ability to go to a familiar location, you lose familiar weapons, and it, it felt like a, a too big of a disconnect. So you guys realized uh, fairly quickly on then that you wanted to tie it into the Phoenix saga and not sort of completely abandon that. Well, I mean, I think Judgment was a good sort of cautionary tale where people go like, you know, a lot at the time, Baird was a really popular character, still is, but it was just when you tried to put it all, everything on his shoulders, a lot of people kind of rejected the idea that Marcus wasn't part of that game. And so we just felt like, okay, well, Marcus is obviously, he's always been the central figure, so how do we tie it back in some way? And then it was just finding out what made sense, and we wanted to go far enough into the future that you could have a character, a new character that was old enough to be a warrior. Like if we had a 14-year-old boy, you'd be, uh, yeah, I don't know if I truly believe you're the guy that's going to come up and rise against the monsters for me. Um, and then if we went 30 years in the future, or whatever, then Marcus becomes, you know, this 100-year-old guy you can't have around anymore, you know. So we had to find this sweet spot between Marcus being uh, alive and able to still join you, and yet we wanted to, like, get into the 20s so that you believe that JD and Kate and Dell were old enough to actually fight. So um, you've put together like a pretty great cast to breathe life into these characters. Right. Um, Liam McIntyre from Spartacus, mm -hmm. you know, among them. Uh, what was that process like? Did you guys have actors in mind from the get-go once you started writing, or did the writing change when you got actors? Were these guys just found through, you know, dozens of dozens of submissions, and you're like, that's the guy. Or close your eyes, hear the voice. So, like, what is that process like for you guys? Yeah, it's a mix. Sometimes you get sort of divine inspiration, or somebody knows somebody kind of thing, and sometimes it's actually like, hey, listen to all these submissions, and that definitely was the case for Kate. And, and I mean, Laura is awesome, but we 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 reached out to we wanted to look for a, a diverse set of voices. Like, hey, what here's a range of voices we're looking for and so what you do is you go and you listen through I think I got 120 
voices for Kate and like auditions sent to me and, it's, and, and so they just sit there and you start to pare it down and pare it down and pare it down until you get into something you want to actually go back and then re-record again with some direction and then once we got down to like we felt like Laura was really strong um, we do things like sort of these um, have them work together to see if there's chemistry and so having we brought in Liam pretty early to work with John and say okay does this work as a father-son thing and then having Eugene and, and, and Liam and, and Laura together go oh wow this they actually connect like they were almost instantaneously friends in the booth and so we're like oh these guys actually work really well together because it's the worst thing when you're trying to have a, a cool relationship on in the game but these two people hate each other in the booth or they're not they're not generous as actors or something you know and so we had to try to find to make sure they could work well together yeah there's good there seems to be good chemistry you know among yeah, the cast right away too good actually that was one of the things that was really funny for us is that as we started that we put the three of them in a the booth and they were just constantly laughing and making jokes with each other and 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 they just fit together really well as a, as a group and then we actually like we need more attention and more drama, and so we had to sort of get them to stop uh, getting along so well <laughs> occasionally. So. You had to stop them from having too much fun. Exactly. We got some work to do here, guys. Well, it was interesting because in Gears 4, we didn't, I didn't do a lot of ensemble recording in the previous ones, and so there's only very few cases. The moment where um, uh, Dom and Marcus are looking for Maria, and they have a fight just before they break and decide which way to go, look for his wife or don't, like that was, we felt that that fight was so important to have in the moment that we brought both of them in and had it live in the booth. Um, but other than that, we very, generally everybody recorded separately. Um, and for Gears 4, we wanted to do more ensemble because we, we felt like the quality of the performance of having all of them in the booth together was uh, so much better. And so that it was that notion of they were just having too good of a time sometimes. <laughs> so we had to go like, hey, hey, hey. And one of the things we do with Gears is we really allow our, our actors to ad lib. Like once they get uncomfortable with the characters, then we let them go. And that's something that we just say like, hey, this is going to happen. Well, plus we sort of write on the go sometimes too. But there's a bunch of stuff. Like if you go back to one of our um, E3 demos where uh, Kate says, well, you're glowing now. So that's good. Like when he touches the pot, that was her ad lib in the moment. That was not written for her that way. And so it's those sorts of things when you have really talented actors who can kind of embody the character and then bring their own dialogue to it. It makes them feel more, more real. Developing games. Mm, yes. It's not an easy thing. It is, especially not AAA. AAA is super hard. You know, people play games. It's like when I watch a hockey game and I think, I could have saved that. And the reality <laughs> is there's not a chance, no. not a chance in hell. Did you encounter any sort of um, creative hurdles during development? Was there ever like a sort of moment that you personally had that was just like, oh, crap. Like, what have I got myself into? And, <laughs> and, and if so, how did you rally yourself and the team to overcome that? Uh, it, I think our, probably our biggest one was... Um, well, there was a couple. I think one of them was probably just the fact that it took so long to get back to Gears. You know, we spent months and months and months to just get it to feel like Gears again. So we were, I was sort of like, I can't wait to do the new stuff. Let's get going on the new stuff. And then you realize, nope, still got a couple more months of just laying the pipe and the foundation and, and making sure that it's all there to feel like Gears. And so that was one of the things that was sort of frustrating early on is I wanted to start doing a bunch of new innovation and it still didn't feel like Gears yet. The timings weren't right, the movement wasn't right, the speeds weren't right. A bunch of stuff that just because of the move from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4, we lost a lot of things, especially AI. And so the game, when the AI changes, the game just doesn't feel like Gears. And the other was just that when we came to a team that was really new, they Everybody looks at Gears and, and sort of sees its simplicity and thinks that it's easy, much like you're talking about, I could have saved that, right? Mm -hmm. And so when people, you bring to people, a seasoned developers who've made all kinds of other games like Assassin's Creed and Crisis and Space Marine and all these types of things, and then you say, hey, we get to do Gears, and they go like, well, that's awesome. Well, you know what I haven't seen in Gears? I haven't seen verticality, and I haven't seen this, and I haven't seen that, and I haven't seen this. And after like a month of that, and, and you look at like, wait, 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 I haven't even, you guys, I haven't seen Gears yet, let alone all the stuff that you haven't seen. So we actually had to go and say, okay, everybody's going back to school. And we ended up with this process where we went and said, okay, here's these encounters in previous games, like Gears 1, go remake that encounter. And so they would go and learn what was done there and, and make it. And you go, okay, you've recreated, that's great. Now make that better than what it was in Gears 1. And then they would go do that and that would be great. And then we go, okay, now based on what you learned, go make your own. And then they did that. And that's some of those stuff is actually in our game. And we had to go back to that, go back to school and learn the basics before we go crazy. Very cool. Now, with the team wanting to jump ahead, you know, right. it's like trying to do a kickflip before you learn to ollie, right? You, right. Need, you, need, you need those things there. But as far as influencing the direction that Gears 4 took, besides looking at the past trilogy and even like the novelizations and things like that, were there any um, movies that inspired you guys creatively that were just like, ooh, let's, let's kind of, maybe not like steal this idea, <laughs> but just, you know, something that kind of, a, a movie that you loved that said, like, we want to make Gears a little bit more like mm -hmm. this, perhaps? Uh, well, I mean, one of the things we use as a frame of reference that, like, 
So if you go back, because so, I want to make sure that clear that we didn't, we didn't. I'm going to set a goal that we didn't actually achieve. So just I want to caveat it first. But if you go back and you know look at the original trilogy that Cliff talks about, you know there was meant to be this Resident Evil meets Brothers in Arms, and it was supposed to be that's what. And at the end of the day, when you put it, you take that idea of this survival horror meets this combat war story, and you put it through the filter, which is all the personalities involved and the creatives involved. I really feel like we made Predator. Like, if you look at Gears, if I was to compare it to a movie, I would say we made Predator. Um, and so when we were starting out and we were looking at how to communicate the differences between the previous trilogy and the current game, um, we were using Batman a lot. We were talking about, hey, look at, I kind of think about Gears of War 1 through 3 as sort of the Tim Burton Batman. It's sort of the comic booky, larger than life, very iconic characters. And what we were trying to get to is more of a Christopher Nolan, Dark Knight, and a lot more nuance right. and subtlety. Now, we. In trying to get there, we realized that's too far. We didn't want to go that dark, and we didn't want to be that serious. That I find where games fall apart is when they take themselves too seriously. And so we, where we ended up was somewhere in the middle, where we're not this over-the-top comic booky game, you know, a Tim Burton game, but we're certainly not Christopher Nolan either. That we still have banter, we still have humor, um, and so. Yeah, so we used Batman as a reference point for us, like in terms of tone, and then things like Old Man Logan and as a comic book is something that we really was inspired, like me in terms of thinking about how we wanted to portray Marcus as a sort of loner out on his farm and how he feels about the world, and that's why we call him Old Man Marcus. That's awesome. Old Man, Old Man Logan and Batman references. Your geek cred is just slowly going <laughs> up with people, I'm sure. Um, now the sawed-off shotgun in yes. Gears Three. I mean that proved to be a little bit of a controversial thing Super among fans. Um, I quite enjoyed it myself. There was always ways to combat it if you kind of had a feel for what you were doing out there. Yeah. But in Gears 4, going into the multiplayer stuff, mm -hmm. is there a weapon that you absolutely love yourself, but you think, eh, I don't know, this might be the new like sawed-off shotgun? Uh, yeah, I mean, so the weapon I love the most is the drop shot. The ability to, to just throw something out over the map and bring it down is, is and blow up people is awesome. Uh, it's so satisfying. I think the overkill is probably going to be because it's a shotgun and it's a quad-barreled shotgun that you know that can tear people apart. I think it has the opportunity for that, but I think we balance it in a way that, in terms of the faster you fire, the more spray there is to it. Um, so we've tried to be really focused on balancing. You know, one of the things that. Uh, Ryan, who's our, our lead multiplayer designer, is really focused on is making sure that everything was could be used in a competitive sense, like could be used in esports if they wanted to. And, and that was really the way that our game is made. Like when you look at the three pillars of multiplayer and horde and campaign, there's actually a shared development. Like in the story, we'll come up with an idea, hey, I need a sniper rifle for the robot. And so then we'll pass that to the multiplayer team to kind of figure out how that would fit when inside a multiplayer and then we feed that back into the campaign and the same thing with Horde where we go like I need a creature that shoots stuff out of its chest and then we would come up with that idea and then we'd make sure it worked in Horde and so this idea of sharing whether it's sharing creatures with Horde or sharing weapons with multiplayer we always had to find a balance between the three. I noticed some of the executions just in my brief uh, hands-on that I've had so far are, you know, pretty extreme. Yeah. It's, they seem to have been like notched up a level. They were already pretty gruesome. Right. During development, have you guys, uh, did you ever hear any ideas for executions that you were just like, guys, like right. that's just grotesque, it's too, too far, brutal, we can't right. do it, and if so, could you share an example? Uh, well, we've always had that problem of trying to make sure we rein people into a, a certain amount. You know, one of the things is that we always try to be is just so over the top that it's fun, right? And because if you can, you know, when we were making the, the chainsaw for the very first time back in 2006, we, there was conversations about having the blade catch on the bone, so it would catch at your clavicle and catch at your spine, and, and it got really gruesome really fast. Um, so that, that idea of popping this big balloon is what it kind of feels like now, right? You just sort of explode. Um, and so, but every game that we've done, people are like, hey, how can we ratchet that up? How can we ratchet it up? And back at Epic, we had these really sort of like horrible, <laughs> horrible meetings around, oh, we can deform individual limbs so you can shoot it to make it look like hamburger meat and all this stuff. And we're just like, you know what? I, we're not, not, we're not, you know, we don't do torture games here where this is all supposed to be for fun. So that was sort of the big, it's always that kind of reining in, especially again, we you know, bring it here and everybody's like, oh, I get to play with this now. Like, let me do all these crazy stuff. And the stuff we stay away from, like we try to stay pretty hard away from like really obvious decapitations and stuff like that, which is just anything that might have other meanings and things like, you know, from a political perspective or social perspective, we try to watch out for. But then we also just try to take it so far over the top that it can never be plausible, that it's not, you know, disgusting. It's just funny because it's, so, that part is cartoonish. I mean, if you haven't seen the try shot one yet, you have to try that. It's, it's pretty, pretty 
radical in terms of the, it's a three barrel chain gun that they pick up and slam on the head and then spin the barrel so the body just whips around underneath it. It's pretty awesome. Right, I haven't experienced myself. I think it was shown off in the, uh, the Gears multiplayer yeah. trailer that came out uh, a month ago or so. That was the one that got me thinking like, what else is in this game right now? Because that's insane. That's probably the craziest uh, execution I've seen. Yeah, the one, I think back in Gears 3, the, the flamethrower insertion into your stomach and blowing fire out your mouth is probably one of the ones that I thought was probably one of the far, farthest extremes. But yeah, the new try shot is crazy. Real question. Okay. It's not that deep, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Gosh. Okay. How confident are you in Gears right now going into launch? Oh, wow. Uh, you're trying to like, call your shot, you're basically trying to make me do. Um, I'm actually really confident in the sense, at least in terms of what we've made. Like, you know, it's a very competitive window. We have lots of games coming out at the same time. And I think the game critics are, have, have changed and since the 10 years that we started doing this. I think how people score games is different and, and those sorts of things. So in terms of all the outside factors of like, oh, hey, how do you deal with competition or how do you deal with critics? I'm not, that, those are going to take care of themselves. To me, what I'm worried about is, did I make a good game? And, you know, and that's actually been one of the questions the team has had for me. You know, they've never made a Gears game, so they've kind of like, okay, we've made one now. What do you think? Like, you know, this is your fourth. And I think we made a great Gears game. Like, I'm really proud of it. And when you get to play Horde um, tomorrow, like, you'll get to see some of that. Like, I think hopefully you got some of it from the campaign too. But the fact that we've been able to go from a new team with nothing to, I think one of the better Gears games and, and the amount of stuff we've been able to get into it and the, and the quality at which it's executed, I'm, I'm really excited. Hey, let's do it really quick. Okay. Let's, let's answer these off in under a minute. Okay. Uh, if a Gears of War movie adap adaptation ever becomes a thing again, who would you like to direct it? Uh, Joss Whedon. Which one game have you played the most in your lifetime? Which one game have I played the most in my lifetime? Diablo. Favorite game of all time? Uh, again, Diablo. Name a game designer you admire. Uh, name a game designer, I admire, uh, Neil Druckmann. Who gets the drunkest at your event parties? Not me. Pancakes or waffles? Oh, pancakes. Star Wars or Star Trek? S Star Wars, although I love both. Is that okay to love both? No. Oh, shit. Fuck, Mary kill, Marcus, Dom, Baird. Fuck, Mary kill, and Marcus, Dom, Baird. Uh, I have to go with fuck, I'm Baird, Mary... Marcus kill Dom because I did. <laughs> Ouch. Poor, poor Dom. Poor Dom. Rod, uh, I got to say it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. Guys, Rod Ferguson, head of uh, Coalition. This has been a little Gears of War 4 interview. For all things Gears of War 4, keep it locked at COG Connected.